This short instructional video will cover Modern Language Association style guides for in-text citations for composition classes. As we said in the first video, which uh, covered how to create a works cited page, you really want to begin with your works cited page. Uh, once you have your works cited page created, then as you write your essay, it's going to be very easy to reference your sources. In fact, as I said before, the whole point of Modern Language Association style is to direct your reader to the Works Cited page, which lists the sources of all your information that you cite in your essay. So let's begin with one example. Let's begin with this guy over here, Eric Fromm. So we've included him in our Works Cited page. Now we're going to quote uh, from this source as we are writing our essay. Well, this isn't hard at all. In fact, so we have the first word listed here is from, it's the last name of the author, and that's the word we have to reference when we are writing our essay. See, that's why it's nice to have your Works Cited page created in advance, because you're just looking for that first word. By the way, that's why we use hanging indents in creating a Works Cited page, so that it's easy to find that first word for each entry, because all we're doing is referencing that first word. So in our essay, let's say we write something like this. As a noted social psychologist has argued, quote, to love somebody is not just a strong feeling, it is a decision, it is a judgment, it is a promise. Now, what I've included in the parenthetical citation is the word from, because that's the first word listed in the work cited entry. It also happens to be the last name of the author. And I've also included the number 51 because I'm quoting from page 51 of his text. Notice that there's just a space and then the number. There is no comma. There is no P dot or PG dot. All we put is the number because it is the page number where we find that quote. Okay, so let's look at another way to do this. Let's say instead of introducing it with a vague reference to a social psychologist, we are now including his name in the introductory phrase. So we have Eric from argues and then the quote. Well, because I've included the first word from the works cited list entry, which is of course the last name of the author, from, because I've included that in my introductory phrase, I don't need to put it again in my parenthetical citation at the end of the quote. So at the end here, we have just the number 51. And again, that is uh, signifying page 51. There is no P dot or PG dot, it's just 51. Okay, note that the period falls after the parenthetical citation. Let's look at some other examples. Let's look at this one. Now, here we have a source, the National Endowment for the Arts. This is not the name of an author. So I have here in my essay, one study found, quote, less than half of the adult American population now reads literature. It is acceptable to abbreviate the word national, and we might want to include just the next word, and we don't need to include the entire phrase, National Endowment for the Arts. So in my parenthetical citation, I just have National Endowment. And because it appears on page nine as a Roman numeral in the source document, I'm going to keep that Roman numeral here in my parenthetical citation. Now let's imagine that we are citing from a non-print source. Uh, here we have uh, the title of an episode from uh, the sitcom Friends. The title of the episode is, quote, The One Where Everybody Finds Out. So there is no author. Uh, there is no uh, name that we have here. In fact, the very first word in this citation is the word the. Uh, of course, we ignore that word. We uh, only pay attention to uh, the word that comes after it, which would be the word one. So we're alphabetizing it by the O in one. Still, uh, how do we reference this? Well, over to the right here, you can see that I have uh, imagined that I've, I'm writing about uh, this episode, and I see at the height of mutual deceit and intrigue, Phoebe declares, they don't know that we know, they know we know. And so what I do is I put uh, the words, the one. And note that I put uh, those words in quotation marks because uh, the entire phrase, uh, the one where everybody finds out, is in quotation marks. The title of the episode is placed in quotation marks, so I include those quotation marks around the abbreviated uh, form of that title, which is the one in my parenthetical citation. Also note here that I include a timestamp. Because I'm not reading from any print document, I'm looking at a video, I need to include the timestamp. So I know that Phoebe says this 
at uh, 13 minutes and 18 seconds into the episode, and uh, she finishes saying it at 13 minutes, 20 seconds into the episode. All right, so uh, let's look at the Bible. Um, if we want to cite the Bible, uh, it gets a little tricky because we're not going to reference it as Bible or the Bible. Uh, note that MLA format requires that we use book abbreviations when referencing the Bible. So um, we have G-E-N period, which uh, is an abbreviation for the book of Genesis. MLA style guides uh, abbreviates all books and shows you how to abbreviate all books in the Bible. So if you were ever interested in quoting from the Bible, you would have to know those abbreviations. So for if you were going to quote from Genesis, we have G-E-N period. We don't put uh, the words the Bible in the parenthetical citation. We put the book from which this citation comes. And then notice that we also put the chapter in Arabic numeral form, the number three, colon, four through five means verses four through five. All right, if it is a short quote, and what do we mean by a short quote? A short quote is four lines or fewer within your own paragraph. Then you integrate it within your own paragraph, as we see here. Rodriguez says, we remained a loving family, and it goes for no more than three lines within my own paragraph. And as long as I've got four lines or fewer within my paragraph, I'm good. We integrate it into my paragraph just like this. We put quotation marks around it, and notice that the period falls after the parenthetical citation. But if I have a long quote, and let's say we've got more than four lines, and as we can see here, we definitely have more than four lines. Notice that even if it's a partial line, like the word sounds is just on its own line here, we count that as a line. So I have six lines here, even though the word sounds is a partial line. In fact, line one, we remained a loving family, is a partial line as well, but we count that as a full line. So now we've got six lines. This is certainly more than four lines. We are not allowed to integrate it into a paragraph like this with quotation marks. We have to use what is called block format. Now block format is, as you can see, you increase indent uh, only a quarter inch or you tab in once to begin your paragraph. You're going to increase indent twice or a uh, half an inch from your margin for a block uh, quote. And you're going to do that only from the left margin. You do not increase indent from the right side, only from the left side. And notice that we have removed the quotation marks. Uh, there are no quotation marks around this quote. Um, by using block format, we are indicating this is a quote. These are the exact words that are being said. We don't need quotation marks that would be redundant at this point. By using block format, we are indicating this is a quote. We've also uh, placed the final period before the parenthetical citation, uh, which is different from short quotes. And so the, the period actually moves uh, to before the parenthetical citation when we have a long quote like this. All right, when including a quote within a quote, uh, you need to change those to single quotation marks. Let me give you an example here. So let's say we want to use this excerpt from uh, Mark Twain's uh, Reading the River. But what does uh, the lovely flesh in a beauty's cheek mean to a doctor but a break that ripples above some deadly disease? And I want to use that whole bit there, including the word break that has quotation marks around it. So in my essay, I would write, Twain asks, quote, what does the lovely flush in a beauty's cheek mean to a doctor but a, and notice that now, as I have double quotes around the word break in the original, I'm changing them to single quotes here because I cannot have double quotes inside double quotes. Let's look at a, another example here. Here's the original. Uh, when chemotherapy fails to cure Mrs. Bacon's cancer, what we say is Mrs. Bacon failed chemotherapy, and I want to use that from this essay. And I say, according to Perry Class, uh, when chemotherapy fails to cure, and I've got the whole quote here, right? Well, in the original, of course, that's where the quotation marks appear. And because I've got quotation marks inside quotation marks, I've got to change them to single quotes. And I know that looks a little goofy there before the parenthetical citation to have a single quote followed immediately by a double quote, but that's exactly how you do it. Okay, when quoting someone who was quoted by your source, you need to use the abbreviation QTD in. So um, 
let's look at this example. Carl Jung makes a similar observation of mob mentality. And then we have this quote that, uh, that comes from Carl Jung. The, the thing is, we didn't read anything actually written by Carl Jung. We found this quote in a source by Amy Griffin. Uh, Amy Griffin wrote uh, an article called Jackson's the Lottery, and she's talking about mob mentality, and we like this. She quotes Carl Jung. We like this quote by Carl Jung. So in our parenthetical citation, we need to make it very clear that we didn't read something written by Carl Jung. We found this in uh, the source by Griffin. So we have QTD, uh, period, uh, that's an abbreviation for quoted, the word in, and then uh, the name Griffin, because that's where we found it, is in her source. And again, we're pointing the reader to our works cited list entry that begins with her last name, Griffin. All right, let's move on to poetry. When citing three lines or fewer of poetry, you include the quote within your own text. You use quotation marks, of course, around the whole thing, and slashes to indicate where the line breaks appear in the poem. Uh, the parenthetical citation includes line numbers, not page numbers. We talked a little bit about this earlier. And if citing a poem that has only lines and no cantos, books, or other parts, then you want to use the word line or lines in your first citation. And then having established that the numbers designate lines, and then you just give the number or numbers alone uh, thereafter. So let's look at an example here. Uh, this is from Whitman's poem, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. And we have here uh, uh, the slash that indicates the line break. So how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, space, slash, space, till rising, right? So that indicates that that's where one line ended and here's where another line is going to begin. And then in my parenthetical citation, I use the word lines because this is the first time that I'm quoting from uh, a poem. And so I indicate that this, I'm giving you lines, not pages, and then five through six, um, lines five through six. Then the next time I quote from this poem here, I'm going to just include the line number. I don't have to use the word line or lines. Okay, let's look at what we do if we have more than three lines. We use block format. Um, and we place the lines in the same relative positions as they appeared in the original poem. If a line of a poem doesn't fit within the margins of your essay because you're using this block format, then it needs to be formatted with hanging indentation. So let's look at an example from, again, Walt Whitman because he writes these incredibly long lines. And we can see here that the first line that we quote in this block format is in hanging indent. That's because it is such a long line, it won't fit. I increase indent twice from the left margin, as I'm supposed to for uh, block quotes. I've got more than three lines of a poem here. Uh, but because it's so long, uh, it continues back. And I need to make it clear to the reader that this is actually supposed to all show up on one line. So I use this hanging indent here. And then I have lines five, six, seven, and eight that follow. And in my parenthetical, I'm using uh, four through eight to indicate that this comes from lines four through eight. Assuming I've already introduced uh, this as a poem, I've already used the word line or lines in a previous citation, I only need to put the numbers now. And so the numbers represent the line numbers. And again, eight down here, this is the particular line where this quote comes from. And that concludes uh, our introduction to in-text citations. I hope this video has been helpful and good luck.